Welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining me. And today we're going to be talking about frequently asked questions about cultured vegetables. And um, as the weather warms up and people have more vegetables and um, a more abundance of produce, this is the time of year to really learn to culture your vegetables. It's so much easier than canning. And uh, it gives you probiotics, whereas canning kills the probiotics and the enzymes, while fermentation um, preserves the vegetables, preserves the enzymes, loads it with extra vitamins and, and minerals, especially vitamin C. And uh, it can last like nine months in your fridge if you ferment your vegetables. So this is one of my favorite times of the year. It's it's almost June here. And um, fermented vegetables are just hands down my favorite way to eat, to eat vegetables. And they can provide you with months and months of probiotics that are much stronger than supplements. So here's the deal. When you eat a probiotic food, the food itself pro- provides a protective armor that helps shield the friendly bacteria. So it speeds the transport out of your stomach and thus keeping the good bacteria intact. But supplements like pills, probiotic pills, are often trapped in the acids of the stomach and the probiotics are killed before your body ever gets a chance to use them. So forget everything you think you know about vegetables and let me tell you what happens when you culture or ferment them, which is the same thing. Fermentation and culture is the same thing. If you grow your own probiotics in jars of vegetables, you'll be shocked and amazed at all they can do. Cultured vegetables have a special power that go beyond regular vegetables. I love them. I reach for them all the time. And you only need like a spoonful and you get huge benefits and huge amounts of probiotics. Um, They can be powerful food. They can work like medicine. And I always have, I, I have so many in my refrigerator. I have five or six jars right now. And I encourage you to do this as well. Uh, you don't have to have that many jars. Even one is great. Um, but there'll become a time when you need their help. And like me, you'll be glad you have them. If you have any kind of stomach distress, um, any kind of ailment in the gut, just a spoonful of the juice can fix you up in a hurry. I have tons of information about that on my website at culturefoodlife.com. And you'll once you have them, you don't have to believe me until you try it. And once you try it, you will be convinced um, of how powerful they are. Everybody knows vegetables are good for you. Everybody knows that. But cultured vegetables go far beyond regular vegetables. And I have a whole blog about seven or eight reasons why I eat cultured vegetables. And I'll link that in the description below. Um, But here are some of the reasons I eat cultured vegetables. They are extremely helpful for seasonal allergies. They load you with vitamin C and B vitamins that helps you combat any kind of like um, allergic symptom. They're wonderful for that. Um, They add extra vitamins and minerals to your cultured vegetables. So for instance, if you have a head of cabbage, one cup of that cabbage is 60 milligrams of vitamin C. When you ferment it, you get 700 milligrams of vitamin C. It just increases because of the um, process of fermentation. That's what it does. The special bacteria, the good bacteria that are in cultured vegetables will strengthen your good bacteria, make it grow and multiply, and that will help you to kill harmful pathogens that invade the body, like viruses, colds. They're especially um, powerful within the first few days of making them. Like, okay, it takes about six to seven days to ferment cultured vegetables on the counter, but like the first that first week, they are super strong and they stay strong. Once you put them in the fridge, they do stay stronger, but they're the strongest then. But um, one of the things that I use them for on a regular basis is especially anytime there's, you know, um, anybody's sick, anybody has stomach stress, or if there's, you know, we've had terrible virus. We Let's not talk about that. But anyway, this last year was just brutal. And I have so much information on how they help combat even things like COVID-19. And I've got a lot of information. I've got a lot of research. I've got actually um, information from the World Health Organization that that actually stated that cultured vegetables, fermented foods really help with that. And I'll link that in the description below too. Um, And 
it helps with just regular things too. Like if you have a cold, um, if you're just, if you've overeaten and your liver stressed out, this is a wonderful thing that helps to strengthen your body. Um, it also, when you ferment your vegetables, it removes pesticides. So after about, I think it's six days, 99 or 98% of all pesticides are removed from cultured vegetables. And I'll link more about that too. Uh, once again, it helps with stomach distress. Um, it helps with cancer prevention. I've got a lot of information about how effective crowd is against breast cancer and other types of cancer. Actually, one of my colleagues that works with me, um, one of the reasons he came to work with me and how I found him was that he was he was struggling with um, Hodgkin's lymphoma stage three. And now he's like, I can't remember how many years, I think it's 10 years or seven years, uh, cancer free. Um, it's a really interesting story and I'll link you that story too. And um, I also have uh, a whole article about seven reasons I eat culture vegetables, and I'll link that in the description below too, because these are just a, a few of I've said very vaguely. But um, let's get into the questions, okay, so that you can have some of your questions answered. And once again, I'm going to link the article to this so you can read it, so you don't have to remember everything. But the first question I get asked a lot is, do I need a starter culture to make cultured vegetables? Okay, now here's the deal. No, you don't need a starter culture to make cultured vegetables. You can do it with salt. However, using a starter culture, you'll get more probiotics and a lot of other benefits. And let me explain to you your options, and you can better choose which method is best for you because I just want you to make them. And if you don't can't afford a starter culture, you don't have access to one, you can still do it with salt. So I want you to make it because I want you to get better. Let me tell you about why the one things are better than others because you can do it with kefir whey too. Um, but I've tried them all and, um, and I've learned a lot through trial and error, which is a great teacher. And I only sell things in my store that I like and use. So I will always shoot straight with you, um, what I do and what I use personally. The starter cultures are stronger because they allow, once you ferment them, um, they will keep the good bacteria high, at a high level in your fridge for many, many months. Whereas if you just do it with salt, um, you don't get the um, the high amount of probiotics because you're just, after they've sat for a while, they start to consume it all. And so that tends to diminish. And you can also use kefir whey, which is another great option, which gives you lots. But the only thing about kefir whey is that kefir whey has a lot of other bacteria in it that tend to compete with the main ones that are naturally occurring in cultured vegetables. So it can give it kind of a tangier taste that I like. So I don't use that. It, I usually use just the starter cultures. Um, but there's a lot of starter cultures. You don't have to use mine. I have a cutting edge culture that has probably the most probiotics of the, any of the starter cultures, but there are other starter cultures too. But what I like to do is to make sure that it has the most lactobacillum um, planta planetarum because that's the one that's naturally occurring cultured vegetables. And this is a transient bacteria, so it doesn't last very long in the body. But what it does is it kind of builds up and um, in the body and it'll stay for like five days and it attracts pathogens. It um, helps to eliminate all kinds of debris in the colon and things like that. So you want a lot of lactobacillus plantarum. And if you use salt, you have to usually double the amount of salt that I use in my recipes because you need to drop the pH to make sure that the environment is safe. So with salt, you just need to make sure you add more salt than is required in all of my recipes. And I have all that information. Um, I'll link that in the description below. But anything that you decide to do, I just want you to make them. Um, you don't, you can, you can do any of these methods. You're still going to get loads and loads of benefits. And uh, you want to keep them in your fridge for when you need them and consume them as, you know, a spoonful at a time is plenty and it'll make all the difference. Okay, the second question, what kind of jar should I use to make cultured vegetables? Now, this particular topic can get me all riled up because for a while there, there was a certain uh, company saying that you had to use an airlock jar to make cultured vegetables or you'll harm yourself or you won't culture properly. And it's simply not true. Um, you know, when people tell you that, follow the money because um, they've been fermenting for thousands of years and they didn't have airlock jars. And it also makes a sensational blog that drives people to their website and scares people. And then people will come to me and say, is that true? 
Um, and then the folks don't want to make cultured vegetables if they don't have the fancy equipment. Now, I sell airlocks too. I love airlocks to ferment, but you don't need to have them to make cultured vegetables. You can use a jar with just a lid and it can be a metal. The metal tends to corrode over time, so I like to use plastic, but if that's all you've got, that still works. Just keep the vegetables away from the lid because um, it'll corrode it because that's what it does. It breaks down... It, Fermentation breaks down compounds like it breaks down the pesticides. It'll eventually break down lids, too, if they're metal. Um, but by no means do you have to have an airlock jar to make cultured vegetables. You can use a regular canning jar. You can use a clamp-down lid jar, you know, have those clamp-down lids. You can use a crock. Um, you can I, The crocks are my least favorite just because... You have to make a bunch all at once, and sometimes they can get a little bit of mold if they're not under the water. And a lot of people um, really like it because they can make a big batch, which is great. But I just never have room in my fridge because I have so many. I like variety. Let's put it that way. So I like to make mine in smaller jars so I can have different cultured vegetables in my jar. But all of those will work. And um, you can even use a, you know, like um, they have these big fermentation vessels too. And you can use those too, but they all work great. And nothing is required that's fancy. Um, I like airlocks just because they allow the vegetables to be a little crisper. They ferment better. They get less chance of this yeasty stuff that gets on the top. People think it's mold. It's white. It's harmless. It's just a byproduct of fermentation that if your vegetables are older, or if you don't have enough high amounts of bacteria in your vegetables, you can get this white comma yeast. It's hard, not harmful, but it can make your vegetables taste bad if you don't scoop it up. So that's another reason I like airlocks. That helps to diminish that. It doesn't happen all the time. But whatever way you use it, if you just have a jar, you can make cultured vegetables. So that was, that's, a, that's a good thing to remember. And don't let anybody tell you that you've got to have an airlock jar because it's simply not true. Okay. My vegetables are rising in the jar. Is that okay? Yes. This is perfectly normal expected. Fermented vegetables should rise and expand as they culture. Some of them don't, like carrots, they don't really do that. Um, they have too many sugars in them, so and they only take two days to ferment, so they may not rise up in the jar. But like things like cabbage, they should be rising up in the jar, and, and you might see a little bit of bubbles on the second or third day. That's just normal part of fermentation. Okay, now another question I get asked a lot, can cultured vegetables develop botulism? Okay, here's the cool thing. This is science. No, botulism is an issue with canned goods because the heating that they use to can, can the um, vegetables kills all the good bacteria. And when culturing foods, the healthy bacteria thrive and make it possible for the bacteria that causes botulism um, to survive. It can't survive because all the other, all the other bacteria get killed when you can something because of the heat. Botulism is the, is the only one that is strong enough to survive heat. And that's why people get it in canned goods. And you don't do that in fermentation. You don't heat anything. So you can't, botulism can't survive. The other bacteria keep it in check. So, and I have a great article about uh, vegetable, um, fermented vegetables are safer than raw vegetables. And I'll link that too. Okay, next question. Can cultured veggies be fermented with metal lids? I said that before. Yes, you can use regular canning lids to make them. If you do want, it's best to leave room between the vegetables and the lid because it does tend to degrade it over time. And um, it's best not to have it in con constant contact with the vegetables. And I like plastic um, lids best of all. They work the best for fermentation. Okay, next question. How long do I culture my vegetables on a kitchen counter? Can I leave them longer? Um, most vegetables like kraut things take six days at room temperature. And there are a few vegetables that will culture in only two or three days, but these shorter times are indicated on all my recipes. So vegetables that aren't cabbage usually take two to three days to like pickles, things like that. So you want to, I have like a gazillion recipes on my website and I tell you how long everything takes. Now, if you culture the vegetables longer than six days, they can get a little yeasty tasting and the flavor will change and not for the better they will also lose some of their probiotics because the longer you ferment, the more that the bacteria eats the food and then the less probiotic you have. Now, I get people, people will tell some of my people that you have to ferment them for three to six weeks. I literally just got an email about this not too long ago. And they'll tell you if you don't do it. I had one lady that had been doing my method six days. 
And then she listened to a seminar and she says, no, you don't need a culture and you need to do it for three to six weeks. And then when she did do that, she said she learned her lesson because she had all kinds of problems that she didn't have before. It didn't work as well for her. I don't even know what happened. Um, but you know, that there's nothing wrong with doing your three to six weeks. You just won't get as many probiotics. A lot of people say it's the older method and you should do it that way, but I've done it that way. And I didn't get the benefits that I did from the six days. And I had, um, a microbiologist come to one of my classes and test mine that were done for six days and test somebody's that were done to three weeks. And they basically almost didn't have hardly any probiotics in the ones that had didn't use a culture and had been fermented for a long time, whereas mine had 10 times the amount of probiotics in it. And I noticed that with how it worked in my body, like it would prevent um, us from getting colds and flus. And this was in the very early days of fermentation. And the ones that I fermented for six days were much more powerful and seemed to be much more effective than the ones that were fermented longer and didn't use cultures. So that's my method. And, um, you know, I know people like to ferment it for three, three to six weeks. That's fine. No problem. If you want to do that, I just, this is just my method and I think it works better and I get more benefits. So, you know, it, unfortunately the fermentation as it goes on for weeks on ends diminishes the probiotics. So, um, it just wasn't as beneficial for me. So there's still a lot of benefits to ones that are fermented for a long time and the flavors develop and age differently and taste differently. Um, so whatever you decide to do, you know, try both methods, see which works for you. You can, that's the best way to, to do anything. Um, you know, like the lady that wrote me the letter, she tried both methods and found one that worked better for her. So I, I encourage you to do that because then you've learned the evidence of what you believe to be true because your belief system is going to serve you, not my belief system. So it's best for you to figure out which works best for you. Okay, next question. How long can I store my cultured vegetables? In the refrigerator, cultured vegetables will last up to nine months, even longer. And uh, they can continue to ferment, but a much, much, much slower rate. And I find that most of my cultured vegetables, like pickles, they taste the best at four to six weeks in the fridge. And it's fun to taste them at different stages and see what you like best. I have a blueberry kraut that I love at six weeks. After it's been in, I fry them on the calendar for six days and then let it sit in the fridge for like, four to six weeks, and the whole jar tastes like blueberries. It's delicious. It's spinach and kraut and blueberries. It's absolutely delicious, and I think it tastes better. Just it, it flavors and ages it, and um, you, you just try for yourself. I have uh, other vegetables, too, that do that, and they just sometimes they taste better the longer they're, they're in the fridge. So another question, why aren't my vegetables crunchy? Salt is the key. Vegetables without salt become soft and slimy and mushy. So vegetables made with salt stay crunchy, and it's really important to use a mineral-rich salt like Himalayan or Celtic sea salt because fermentation loves minerals, and so does your body. Your body loves minerals too, but it also keeps the vegetables crunchy. Also, use more salt if you're not using a culture to ferment yours. You really need, that's really important. Um, you'll need to double the salt in my recipes is what I'm recommending. Um, and you need to drop the pH, and having enough salt will help you do that if you're not using a culture. So, um, you know, once again, double the salt recipes in my um, recipes to ensure that you have the proper pH level. Okay, can these foods be stored out of the fridge after they're fermented? Well, technically cultured vegetables can be stored in colder basements or cold cellars, um, but they do continue to ferment um, if it's not cold enough. So then they, they get really, um, they lose some of their probiotics, but they also get a real strong taste. So it, the colder temperatures are best. So, but some people have done in cold cellars and had great success. How will I know if my vegetables are properly fermented? Well, the best way to tell is to taste them and they will taste sour and tart like kraut. And things like carrots, they don't really get sour or asparagus because they don't, it depends on the sugars and the vegetables and what they taste like. Some of those don't get that strong sour taste, but kraut does. So that's one of the best ways to know. Um, and here's how you'll know. If something is wrong, you'll have a really strong, unappetizing odor when you open the jar. You'll smell it. It will smell horrible. You'll be something you don't want to eat, and you'll probably see black spots. I've only seen that, I think, once in 20 years. I saw that, but my jar had a crack in it. So that was why they had gone back. And they had been in the fridge a long time. 
but I think it was because they were getting air, exposed to air. So um, that's how you'll know. It'll just smell horrible and it won't look right. So that's, that's it's a great foolproof method. Most of the time they stay perfectly pure and they smell like crowd. And they smell sour and, and you'll know they're fine. Okay, number, let's see. I don't even know what the number of this is. But do I need weights for my cultured vegetables? You know, in the very beginning when I started culturing, I used weights to hold down my vegetables. And then I did it without weights and it worked just as well. Um, yes, the veggies can climb above the water, but you can open the jar and push them down and leave them the way they are. But some people will recommend rolling up cabbage leaves and putting them on top, but then those things get mold because they're not under the water because you want your vegetables under the water because acidifying bacteria keep your vegetables culturing. And so then the veggies would turn brown because they were above the water and it would just get that yeast on it, that common yeast, that, and I didn't like it. So... You know, I gave up the weights a long, long time ago because, first of all, they were pained because I had to wash and clean them all the time. Um, you can use them if you like, but I, I just don't use them. If I use a culture, it all does, it works fine. Even if they get above the water a little bit, by the time they get in the fridge, they all sink back down and they're fine. So um, I usually, I don't use weights, but you can, but I think that it's a pain. So anyway. Uh, Airlock lids also help to keep the yeast at bay so you don't get that commie yeast. And um, you can skip the wakes. I'm giving you permission to do it because they drive me crazy. So it was too much hassle and it didn't help that much anyway. So I haven't used weight in 18, 20 years. So and my veggies do great. Okay, next question. This is a big question. What are the white spots on my vegetables? Sometimes people will see a troublesome white spot areas. They think it's mold. It's not mold. It's the common yeast I've been talking about. It's harmless. It doesn't hurt anything. But if you leave it in there, it's going to make your vegetables taste off. So I just scrape it off and uh, get rid of it. And then usually once it's in the fridge, um, it, it calms down. But, okay, here's the deal. The times that I've had the yeast happen to me the most was um, there's a there's a really good fermented pickle on the market called Bubby's Pickles. I love them. And I used to use their juice after I'd finished the jar to make another jar. But I would almost always get that common yeast on my pickles. And I believe that's because the bacteria wasn't strong enough. And so it just kind of let the yeast take over instead of the bacteria. So the yeast were taking over and creating that white kind of powder stuff that makes your veggies taste awful. So... I always had a starter culture and then that kind of took care of the problem. And um, then I started making my own brine and that was how I discovered that when you're having the white yeast, that means that your yeast are more dominant than the good bacteria. So, and that's not a bad thing. It just makes that white comma yeast and doesn't taste very good. So scrape it off and next time use a culture and that will get rid of it for you. Okay, what do I do if the liquid is leaking from the jar while my vegetables culture? The liquid, you know, is called the brine. And if you're if you've filled your jar up too full, the brine's gonna leak out because it's gonna rise up in the jar and usually like a couple inches. And so if it does do that, simply open the jar, push the veggies down, and remove a little bit of the liquid or the brine, and uh, you should be fine. It won't hurt anything to do that. Next question: Do I need to use organic vegetables? Here's a cool thing. It's exciting that microbes can help us remove the pesticides from our vegetables, even if they're not organic. And it's often a hardship for people to always buy organic, but the healthy bacteria, lactobacillus, helps remedy this. Lactobacillus planetarium helps remove pesticides from non-organic vegetables. And the bacteria strain studied from these fermented vegetables and kimchi was found to be capable of degrading four different organic phosphorus and sexicides by using them as a source of carbon and phosphorus. So while we think organic's better, you you know it is, it's, organic's always better if you can get it. Um, you actually don't need to use organic vegetables when you're fermenting because it's gonna help you remove all the pesticides. And it's usually 98 to 99% after about five to six days. So that's pretty cool, right? Okay, can I reuse the brine from cultured vegetables? Yes. You can use the brine from cultured vegetables. And here are a couple things you, you need to know. And I've got a whole article about how to do that, what to do. Um, you need to use like a fourth to a half a cup. And I always add a little bit of starter culture too, just to make sure it's strong enough so that I don't get the common yeast on it. 
and um, that makes all the difference in the world. But you can reuse the brine again, and it makes it delicious. Now, if you're going to reuse your pickle brine on your cabbage, it's going to taste like pickles. So you kind of want to keep it within the same type of vegetable that you're using so you don't get a funky taste. Okay, the last question. Should all my vegetables be submerged underwater? Yes, your vegetables should be under the water or they can, again, again develop the common yeast um, if they stay above the water too long. But your vegetables are going to want to float in that jar. So just open them up and push them down. And if you can't keep them down, then you can remove some of the veggies that turn brown or white. And, but once they're in the refrigerator, they will calm down and stay submerged. So um, those are the most commonly asked questions. And I've included a new recipe. It's salt and pepper kraut that I love. It's a simple recipe. It's super simple. And it's just salt, pepper, and cabbage. And it's delicious. It's an easy one to, to make. And um, I also have a video on how to make cultured vegetables on this page. So you can see that in the link description below. And you'll be able to see all these questions and uh, so you can refer back to them. And remember, at, at my start page, if you go to my page, culturefruitlife.com, you'll see a little smiley pot in the menu bar. And it'll say start here. And if you hit that button, you'll see the drop down menu. And it teaches you how to, what culture vegetables are, how to make them, all of the um, problem things that you need to know. Um, videos, it's got, and it's got it for every one of the culture foods. Kefir, kombucha, culture vegetables sourdough, sprouted things, um, water kefir. I've got it all on that little start menu with the smiley pot. So you'll see all of the things and all of the detailed descriptions of things like what happens, um, what you can do when you have troubleshooting problems. And if you're not, you can always email me. Uh, we answer all our emails. I have a staff that does that. So that's one of the things we try to do on a regular basis just to help people. So because I want you to make culture vegetables. So I hope this helps you. There's lots of options, but there's options for everybody. Everybody can make these. Even if you don't have a culture, even if you don't have an airlock, you can do it just with a jar and salt, and you'll make great culture vegetables. So check out my salt and pepper kraut recipe. I think you'll really like that. It's really good. It's simple. It's a great place to start. I have a lot of recipes, but that's a simple one. Thanks, guys, for listening. I hope you'll make some culture vegetables, especially in the summertime um, when veggies are fresh. So then you'll have them for this fall and winter. And uh, you can make them in the fall and winter too, but they're, it's always best when they're fresh. It, it works the best and you'll enjoy the taste and you'll get added benefits. So thanks for listening, guys. Head on over to my website, culturefoodlife.com, to check out um, all the questions. And um, you can check out the videos and all the extra articles that I posted for this. So have a great week, everybody, and we'll talk to you next time.